And as the U.S. continues to see rising number of coronavirus cases, public anxiety also escalating. That includes concerns about using cash. Many worry it could actually be a source of transmission. Though many transactions are now contactless or digital, are we ready to go fully cashless? To discuss, we're joined by Jim McKelvey. He's co-founder of payments firm Square and author of The Innovation Stack. Jim, the effect of this coronavirus on mobile payments, is that a, a, a good thing? I know it's hard to say that it's good in a time of crisis. But. Well, I mean, for mobile payments versus cash, it's certainly good because people are afraid to touch cash. And probably for good reason, because the CDC has not yet determined that cash is not a way of contracting the coronavirus. They've actually traced cash to other infections and people are scared. So they want plastic or better yet contactless payment. What do you do when people though are not going to stores? If I'm not using the mobile payment in the retail footprint, are you hoping that the revenue is made up by some of the online orders if I'm staying home? Yeah, you're gonna see a lot of shift online. You're gonna see a lot of shift of delivery and you're just gonna see a lot of disruption in general. But uh, the great thing about the US economy is that we have all these tiny merchants and they're super adaptable and super resilient. So you give them the right tools and they will make the right choices. How are you seeing consumer behavior change now because of this? Is it permanent? Well, uh, who knows what's permanent, but I, I definitely think we're going to unearth some new trends. So, you know, a, a lot of the white collar workforce is going to work from home now. That's going to set totally new habits. Um, I'm particularly concerned about people who have to go into work, um, people who are hourly workers. Um, we're going to see a lot of disruption in those areas. We're going to have to build new tools for them. And my guess is that those tools are going to be coming from the small businesses, from the people that are on the ground living it. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that that population has access to all the best technologies so they can, they can make the decisions because they're the ones who invent and, the future. And you mentioned those small businesses. I think loans to those small businesses from Square increased about 42% last year, year over year. Are you yes. worried now about some of those loans and the credit quality of those vendors? No, I'm excited about those loans. I mean, those loans do probably the most good because they're tiny loans, um, but they're for the people who are literally in the streets making the decisions. And things are going to be changing a lot, but that doesn't mean that the world's going to come to a halt. It means that things are going to be different. And you, we don't, we can't sit here in New York, you know, predicting what those differences are, but, you know, out through you know thousands or millions of businesses those decisions are being made we just want those people to be connected have the tools they need and the money they need to make those decisions how have all the rate markets this week then impacted the value of those <laughs> loans could you instead of 15 percent is it half that i guess today in a week yeah who knows i mean like you know i'm on the fed and i, I study the fed data we've had a couple emergency meetings and i've looked at all look nobody knows sorry i certainly don't Jim, you're out with a book, The Innovation Stack. Yes. What the heck is The Innovation Stack? <laughs> the, so I picked the worst week in history to launch a new book, but the subject is, is totally relevant. I'm talking about a phenomenon that I observed at Square, which was how Square was able to survive a direct attack by Amazon while we were still a startup. And we survived because we had this thing that's called an innovation stack. And it's a series of inventions, and it's different than normal business. And when I saw this pattern, I did some research through history, and I figured out that companies throughout history who change markets who actually invent new markets have this thing at their call at the core called an innovation stack yeah. and I didn't want to write a business book I actually brought you a copy like it was originally a cartoon it was a comic Great. book so when I originally wrote the thing uh, it was it was Hold in graphic it up novel. So the yes, okay. can get that. so yes it's a comic book here's the just you know destruction of a major city um, there's a murder um, and this is how banking started okay so here you go you can have that um, and look I'm not trying to make light of it right we are going to go through a rough, rough period. Some people are going to go mm -hmm. through a horrible period. Um, but we want those people who are out there doing it uh, to at least understand that, look, the history of great invention and the creation of, of, of new industries occurs with people who are willing to try new things. Mm. And those entrepreneurs are, um, are, are, they're the people who bring us the future. And we just, like, I wanted to write a book for those people. And look, we're all, we're going to need that skill set more than ever because right. nobody knows what's going to happen. You talk about entrepreneurs and visionaries. You were here when we got the news that Bill Gates is stepping down from Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, leaving the board, I should say. Your general thoughts on, on him, the tech space, these visionaries as we continue to see a shift in leadership where some of the original founders are stepping aside. Well, I mean, he's, he's, he's dedicating his life to philanthropy now, and he probably should do that mm -hmm. because... 
his, the impacts that he can have through what he's done uh, and, and the money that he's raised and the contacts he's made and the ideas that he has. I mean, Bill's a voracious reader. He's a very intelligent guy. He's got a fantastic partner. He's got this fantastic organization. And dedicating more time to that um, when that may be the future is, is, I think, a rational choice. And look, Microsoft is being very well run. 